Good evening and welcome to Townhead Christian Fellowship Carol Service. Normally at seven o'clock on Christmas Eve, the doors of the church are open, the building is full of people, there's a buzz of conversation as old friends meet up again and new friends are meeting each other for the first time. There's the sound of brass instruments playing carols. There's the smell of coffee brewing and mincemeat pies heating in the oven. But this year, our service is a bit different. Well, actually, on reflection, our service is not really that different because the meaning and the message of Christmas remain the same and transcend whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. We have a full programme for you this evening. We have musical items. You can either sit back and enjoy them or perhaps you might even want to sing along to them. We have got scripture readings telling us of the birth of Jesus and a message to remind us all of the true meaning of Christmas. We start off our service with a rousing Christmas carol, Joy to the World, brought to us by Jennifer's Rollo. No, I didn't make a mistake and you didn't hear wrongly. I did say Jennifer's Rollo. You thought there was only one Jennifer Rollo in Townhead. So did I. But it seems that just might not be the case.
Celebration today. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will come a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. Mary, did you know?
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and trying to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God.
Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. No. No well, no well, no well. Born is the King of Israel. No well, no. Yeah. 
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds, out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them and came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we've seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Many thanks for those readings in the first few verses from the Gospel of John. Let me now introduce you to our speaker for this evening, uh, Andy Mayo. I've known Andy for uh, a number of years through my work. He would describe himself as a singer-songwriter, and it's good just to hear him preach the gospel this evening. And he's really going to expand on those verses that we've just read together. Thanks, Andy. Hello. Thanks for having me to your Christmas event. I, I don't know what you expected when you uh, asked me to come. You know, one of the things about Christmas is that, well, it's all very surprising. The whole presentation, you know, you've got a, you've got a, one who's a king laid in a manger at his birth. You've got the, uh, the important people in the palace ignored while the shepherds are the ones who get the message. And everything about Christmas seems to, well, turn expectations upside down. And we're just going to read a few lines from a reading that's often shared at Christmas time. It's written by a guy called John. And uh, he was an eyewitness, really deeply involved with uh, some of the later events of Jesus's life. And he shares these words about Jesus's birth. It's from the Gospel of John. Let me read you a few lines. It says this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Wow, that is the opener for the first lines of John's account of Jesus' life. I don't know if you can imagine a target and uh, with those concentric circles. And John has written this a little bit like that. To start with, he wants us to think about the one who's the beginning. He actually ends that sentence with that too. But then the next ring says about this one who is with God, but then the heart of it says that he was God. That's how this passage and how this book of John begins. Let's read the next bit together. It says this. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. John's saying here again that this one, who's the Word, is God. Everything's been made through him. Here's the next part. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Wow, it's beautiful poetry, isn't it? And moving words. But come outside with me for a moment. You might need to stick your hoodie back on and have a look at this. It's, it's a cold morning, but it's glorious. Well, there's something about the dawn, isn't there? Something about the light breaking, breaking over the hillside, the rays of sunshine, bringing life. Perhaps hours before, it had appeared that the darkness had won, that it was going to be dark forever. There was never going to be light again. But then dawn comes and light appears. And that's the message of the book of John. And that's the message of the person of Jesus, that it's not darkness that wins, but light that wins. It's not despair that wins, it's hope that wins. And we've just read verses four and five of John chapter one. The first part says, in him was life. In Jesus was life, not just because it's through him that everything was made, but because in him is life itself. Jesus would stand at a, at a funeral and say, I am the resurrection and the life. 
on the night before Jesus died, he would say to his disciples, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And there are many people who would say that life in all its fullness, from their experience, is found in the person of Jesus. He would say in John 10, verse 10, I've come that they may have life and have it in all abundance and have it in all fullness. That's why Jesus has come. In him was life. In him was, is life. I think we want to turn to each other and say, do we know life in Jesus? But verse four of John chapter one doesn't stop there with the theme of life, but it says then that, and that life was the light of mankind. You know, the hope and the glory and the brightness, well, it's all found in the person of Jesus. Jesus would say in another place in John chapter eight, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then verse five, verse five is glorious. There's been lots of new stories, lots of new films coming out recently, and they end in a kind of brokenness and despair. You're hoping for the uptick, for it all to come together, for it all to make sense. And the film just arcs down and then kind of breaks into little pieces. And you're left wondering, well, was that it? And many people say, well, that's so realistic, you know, because that's what life is like. But the Bible says, no. That isn't what life is like. It's not what life should be. And because of Jesus, it's not what life is. And verse five, it says this, it's full of hope and it changes everything. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Light wins, Jesus wins. You might say, well, how does that happen? Well, it happens because Jesus went not just to a stable and a manger, but he went on to die on a cross. He died on a cross, taking all the wrongness and all the brokenness, all the despair, everything that sets us at a distance from God. He took it on himself as he died. He was put into a tomb and that was the darkest of nights as his followers were broken themselves. They couldn't, couldn't understand that this would be the destiny of this glorious one, Jesus. But then on the third morning, there is a dawn and it's the most glorious dawn as Jesus comes alive from that tomb. And the message of Jesus that resonates throughout the book of John and that resonates through the whole of the New Testament, through the whole of the Bible itself, is that if a person like you or me would put our trust in Jesus, that he died instead of us to take our wrongness, if we recognize that he is the one who's the light of the world, well then our lives will be flooded with the light and life of relationship with him. And that's what he invites us to this Christmas time, to put our trust in him, to realize who he really is and to experience life and light in all its fullness. And how are you responding? We've been asking each other that already by the sunrise. Not far from the spot where I'm speaking to you now, there was a day when I simply realized this, that there is a God who is there who is good and clean. But at the same time, I'm not good and clean. I can't connect with him. But the message of Christmas that turned me upside down back then was that, no, God has come to you. You don't need to get to God, Andy. God has come to you in the person of Jesus, God to the rescue. That's why he came. That's why he was born in a manger. That's why he died on a cross. That's why he rose from the dead, to bring me, to bring you life in all its fullness. And I actually knelt down. <laughs> you don't need to kneel down to speak to God, but I was kind of overwhelmed. And I said, God, thank you that you're so loving. Thank you that your character is one of grace. 
And I said, I'm sorry for all the wrong things I've been doing. I'm sorry for the way I've been trying to be the king when you're the king. And I said, please, please be the king of my life. Please let me live for your glory. And that was the moment that the, that the revolution began in my life. And you know, I think God is calling each of us this Christmas time to recognize who Jesus is, to say thank you to God for this greatest gift ever given. Jesus, God come here, Emmanuel, God with us. And to say sorry for the way that I've been trying to be king when you're king. Please, please take your rightful place. I trust Jesus that you died instead of me so that I could know life in all its fullness. Let's pray together at this moment. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we've been able to read of how Jesus is the one who reveals who you are. He is God with us. And perhaps for the first time, some of us want to say right now, thank you that you are the God who is loving and kind. Thank you that you came in the person of Jesus to reveal who you are, to come to the rescue. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done, for the ways I've been pushing you away. Please be my king. Please help me to see who you are and to live my life trusting in you and living as your child. Thank you for Christmas. And for these moments to think about these big things. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Happy Christmas. in their keeping three kings to follow a star together the poor and the rich and the rich witness that Bethlehem night and a sky full of angels announcing the birth of a glorious light let there be light let it shine bright in the darkness with dazzling white Oh, for the hopeless was born on that night When God sent His Son He said, let there be light We who are His have this calling To praise Him and make His name known So one day the presence of Jesus Shines in every heart and every heart
hopeless was born on that night When God sent His Son and said, let there be light Let there be light Let there be light Let there be Well, we're almost finished. Thank you very much for taking the time to join with us in our carol service. I hope that it's brought you some enjoyment, some encouragement, a sense of peace and hope. Perhaps it's even challenged you to think about Christmas in a way that you've never done so before. We're going to finish with the refrain of that well-known carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. The refrain says, O come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. From everyone here at Townhead Christian Fellowship, a very happy Christmas. O come.